Okay guys, we're going to do a related rates problem together here. Um, this is number three. It was one of our, uh, from our homework yesterday, which depending on when you watch this video might not mean anything. Um, but we have here two cars that start moving from the same point. One travels south at 50 miles per hour and the other travels east at 30 miles per hour. We want to know the rate, the distance between the cars is increasing three hours later. Remember, related rates means that you are taking derivatives with respect to time and you're looking at multiple variables and how they change over time. But they are related because they affect one another. Uh, your first step always, 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 always for a word problem is to draw a picture. You guys know that. Um, here we have two cars that start moving from a point. Let's put a point. One car travels south. Let's draw an arrow here to represent the direction. Another one travels east. Put an arrow there so we know the direction. Uh, let's call this car, the one going south, car A, and this one car B, because we're probably going to have to talk about them later. So traveling south, that's A. Traveling east, that's B. You could flip-flop those or call them something else. It really doesn't matter. Uh, car A is traveling south 50 miles per hour. Car B is traveling east 30 miles per hour. Uh, you might start to see it here. This is a triangle. The distance between the cars, let's call that C. We've made a right triangle. C is a hypotenuse. C is expanding in both directions. So the faster this car goes and the faster this car goes, both of those numbers will affect C. Uh, after you've got a good picture, you want to make a list. That list needs to have all of your variables and for every variable there will be a rate of change or a derivative. Remember, calculus is all about derivatives, at least for a while until we get to antiderivatives. That will come later. So our variables. We have three variables. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less. Sometimes you don't know how many they're going to be when you start, but you make a list of everything you know and you add to it as you find more. Um, I don't know these. They did not tell me these. They told me the rate of change for two of them. dA dt is how fast car A is moving. A is how far car A has traveled. dA dt is how fast it's moving. It is moving 50 miles per hour. Don't mess that part up. Miles per hour. Hour is a unit of time. dA dt, the dt is the change in time. That's where the hour comes from. This will just be miles for A. Same for B and for C, which we don't know either of the, or any of those three yet. DB, DT is 30 miles per hour. Uh, now, I know this, is, this A is going down and the B is going to the right. The important thing is, is that the sides are increasing, which means the rates will be positive. If the sides were decreasing, some of those rates might need to be negative. We've also got DC, DT, which we don't know. I'm going to guess is measured in miles per hour because all the other rates are. This is the answer to the question. That's what we have to find. Now, I think we need to know these. It's possible we don't need to, but I think we can find them out. All they told us is the speed of the car. But they also told us the cars have been traveling for three hours. Well, with a little bit of elementary school math, if I travel for 50 miles an hour for three hours, Car A is going to travel 150 miles. By that same math, B is going to travel 90 miles. Well, I don't know, right? This, this isn't given to me, but I could find this. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. 150 squared plus 90 squared will give me C squared. I'll take the square root to get C. Um, I'm not going to bother with a decimal. But I am going to write that as 30,600 miles in the square root of the square root of 30,600 miles. That's going to be easier to work with than a decimal, so let's use that. We've kind of danced around this already, but our next step is to write an equation. This is always the next step. After you list all your variables and your rates, sometimes as you list them, the equation will become apparent to you. Your equation must connect your variables together. Specifically, if I'm looking for dc/dt. My equation has to have C in it. 
It's really helpful if I can use one or both of these, because I know a lot about them. But I have to use C. Um, I think we already know it. You may have known it when you started the problem, as soon as you saw the right triangle. You got the Pythagorean theorem. Now, we differentiate. Because I don't actually care about the equation that connects the sides. I care about the equation that connects the rates. The derivative of a squared is 2a. But I'm taking the derivative with respect to time. So I need to say times dA dt here. This is implicit differentiation. Or the chain rule. The derivative of a is dA dt. Plus 2b times the derivative of b, which is db dt, equals 2c times dc dt. This looks a little complicated. But the good news is I know a, I know dA. I know B, I know DB, and I know C. DC, DT, or C prime, that's all I'm looking for. So let's plug everything in and solve. And we could actually do it without a calculator, but we'll use a calculator because this in particular is a little rough. 2 times 150 times 50 plus 2 times 90 times 30 equals 2 times the square root of 30,600 times dc dt. This is what I'm looking for. So let's divide this away. Two times 150 times 50 plus two times 90 times 30 over two times the radical 30,600. Let's throw all that into our calculator. Alpha on a ti 4 alpha y equals will give you a fraction. 2 times 150 times 50 plus 2 times 90 times 30 over 2 times the square root of 30,600. 58.309. I'm going to round up and say 58.310 miles per hour. That's my DC DT. And now let's interpret it. Three hours later, that was the time they gave me. I gotta have a win. The distance between the cars is, well, this is positive, so it's increasing. If it had been negative, it would have been decreasing. 58.310 miles per hour. You need to answer in context at a minimum when you give context for your answer, especially if we're talking about more than one question, you want to tell me when we care. In this case, it's three hours later. Sometimes they don't give you a time. But if you can tell me when, tell me when, uh, you need to say what is changing and by how much. That how much has to have units in it. So make sure you include the units. That is the most important part of the context. Uh, in this case, DC, DT, we know that C is measured in miles and T is measured in hours. We could also calculate that by looking at the units here, but if you know the rate of change for C and the rate of change for T and the units they're measured in, it's just going to be miles divided by hours. All right, there you go. Good luck.